Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and when I review graphics cards, I typically test and compare them against the previous generation of GPUs. After all, you want to find out exactly how much faster the new cards are versus what is currently available on the market. But what if you don't have a previous gen GPU? After all, we know that most buyers won't upgrade for at least two, if not three, GPU generations. So for most people, it's not always immediately clear just how much of an upgrade you might be getting from buying a new generation graphics card. With that in mind, when Palette reached out about sponsoring this look at an RTX 4070 and RTX 4070 Ti Super, I thought it was a great opportunity to go back and see just how far things have progressed when compared against a graphics card you might actually be upgrading from, something like the GTX 10 series or the RTX 20 series. The goal of this video then is very straightforward. Palette sent me the RTX 4070 White alongside the RTX 4070 Ti Super Game Rock Omni Black, and I am going to be comparing them head to head against four GPUs from previous generations that you might actually want to upgrade from. I'm talking things like the GTX 1080, the 1080 Ti, the RTX 2070, and the RTX 2080. I'm going to be testing 10 modern games at 1440p and so we can see just how far things have come and later on in the video I'm also going to be looking at ray tracing and the difference that DLSS can make. For this testing then I'm using my regular GPU test system which is provided to us by PC Specialist. This is based on Intel's i9-3900KS CPU and that's paired with the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX motherboard and I've also got 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR5 RGB memory. All testing was done using the MSI MPG321 URX QD OLED 240Hz 4K monitor. Finally, all benchmarks were done with the latest NVIDIA driver at the time of testing, so that was 556.12. Kicking things off then with Alan Wake 2, in my opinion one of the best looking games released over the last couple of years and we can see that even at 1440p the 10 and 20 series cards really struggle to get playable frame rates, even the RTX 2080 sees the 1% lows drop below 30fps. The palette RTX 4070 White however hits 49fps on average so it's over twice as fast as the RTX 2070 and GTX 1080 Ti. The RTX 4070 Ti Super Game Rock Omni Black, however, is faster still, delivering about 70 FPS on average, also making it over double the performance of the RTX 2080. Next up then, we have Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now, this one is playable on the older GPUs, at least from the RTX 2070, which can just about keep above 30 FPS for the 1% lows, but there is still a clear leap in performance from even the RTX 2080 up to the RTX 4070, and we can see that as the palette card is 66% faster. The 4070 Ti Super also breaks past 100 FPS at ease at 1440p, and is once again over twice as fast as the RTX 2080. Despite being nearly four years old now, Cyberpunk 2077 is still a very tough test for modern GPUs, and both the 10 series cards we tested couldn't manage a stable 30 FPS at 1440p. The jump from the RTX 2070 to the RTX 4070 works out at a 78% increase to the frame rate, while the 4070 Ti Super is almost exactly double the performance of the RTX 2080, so that's really not a bad upgrade there. Moving on, Forza Horizon 5, as we know, is a very well-optimized title, and you can still get 50 FPS even with the GTX 1080. However, if you perhaps want to enjoy the benefits of a higher refresh rate monitor, you'll need something more like the Palette 4070, which is capable of nearly 120 FPS, or something like the 4070 Ti Super, which is again over twice as fast as the RTX 2080, which is becoming a little bit of a trend. Next up, we have another new title. This is Horizon Forbidden West. This game does run relatively well on older hardware, that is, as long as you're happy with sub 50 FPS frame rates. To break past 60 FPS, you'll need the RTX 4070, which actually comes in almost twice as fast as the RTX 2070. And then we have the 4070 Ti Super at the top of the chart, which is delivering 106 FPS on average. Spider-Man Remastered is next, and this is another former PlayStation exclusive, and again, it does run relatively well on the older cards. The GTX 1080 Ti is still hitting 51 FPS at 1440p, for instance. 
at well over twice the performance. However, the RTX 4070 does give you a much smoother experience, hitting 115 FPS on average, and the 4070 Ti Super is faster still at 160 FPS, which makes it 130% faster than the RTX 2080. Next up then we have a Plague Tale Requiem, where at 1440p none of the 10 or 20 series cards could keep the 1% lows above 30fps at 1440p. Contrast that with the RTX 4070 sitting at 61fps and very tight 1% lows alongside the 4070 Ti Super at 87fps and you can really see the difference a couple of GPU generations will make. As for the Resident Evil 4 Remake, this is another game where the older cards are still playable, but you can clearly see what a step up to the likes of the Palette RTX 4070 is. Even against the RTX 2080, it's coming in 66% faster, whereas the 4070 Ti Super is well over twice as fast. Starfield, on the other hand, is surprisingly punishing, at least in our test area in the forests on Jemison. Basically, none of the older cars can do ultra settings at 1440p, whereas the RTX 4070 hits 50 FPS and isn't far off offering twice the performance of the RTX 2080. The 4070 Ti Super is even able to hit 71 FPS, making it two and a half times as fast as that 20 series GPU. Finally then, we have Total War Warhammer 3, a DX11 title, but we do still see more of the same at 1440p. The RTX 4070 comes in way ahead of the 2080 to the tune of a 56% margin, while the 4070 Ti Super is over twice as fast once again, hitting 140 FPS. So that is it for the 10 individual games I benchmarked, but now before moving on, we are going to look at the 10 game average results so we can see the big picture overview. As you can see, the Palette RTX 4070 delivered 84 FPS on average across all 10 games we tested, and that makes it twice as fast as the RTX 2070, and just under that compared to the GTX 1080 Ti. The RTX 4070 Ti Super, however, hit 117 FPS, and as you probably gathered from all the individual game benchmarks, that makes it well over twice as fast as the RTX 2080 with a 2.2 times multiplier. Just before moving on as well, there is one final point I want to make, and that is about efficiency. Over all 10 games we tested, I was actually using NVIDIA's PCAT tool, so we can measure power draw of the graphics card only on a per game basis, and that also allows us to work out performance per watt. Based on this performance per watt data you can see here, the current cards are almost twice as efficient as the older models, which does indicate that the gains made in power efficiency go hand in hand with the frame rate improvements too. Moving on though, I did say we were going to touch on ray tracing, though do know I obviously haven't tested the 10 series here as they lack RT acceleration hardware. Starting off though with Cyberpunk 2077, it really does become a case of simply unplayable with the 20 series versus playable on the 40 series. Frame rates could always be higher on the RTX 40 series cards, but like I said, we are going to take a look at DLSS performance in just a moment. Still, the gains are nonetheless incredibly large, with the RTX 4070 Ti Super being almost three times as fast as the RTX 2080 here at 1440p. It's a very similar story as well in Hitman 3. The RTX 2070, for instance, just cannot get a playable frame rate with RT shadows and reflections enabled, whereas the 4070 is 157% faster at 1440p, and it will only get better once we look at performance with DLSS enabled. Of course, the RTX 4070 Ti Super is faster still, delivering 52 FPS on average. And then we come to Spider-Man Remastered, which even with just RT reflections, really does bring the RTX 2070 and RTX 2080 to their knees as they have especially poor 1% lows. VRAM is definitely a factor here, with even the 4070 being almost three times as fast as the RTX 2080, while the 4070 Ti Super is even further ahead. So the ray trace gains are even bigger than what we saw from the rasterized performance. As I've mentioned a few times through this video then, you can of course improve performance further using DLSS Super Resolution, though do note this does also work on the RTX 20 series cards. 
Here we can see an action in Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing enabled, tested on the RTX 4070 at 1440p. This helps bring frame rates up from around the low 30s, almost doubling performance into the 60 FPS region. Of course, we know you can also enable DLSS frame generation for the RTX 40 series GPU, something that isn't supported on previous generations of hardware, and this will boost frame rates even higher into the high 90s or even 100 FPS region on the 4070, with latency looking pretty similar to native performance, as you can see here. We can see a pretty similar thing in Hitman 3 as well. With ray tracing on, the RTX 4070 just about keeps above 30 FPS at native resolution, but with DLSS super resolution set to its quality mode, we get a healthy bump right up into the 50 to 60 FPS region. When we enable frame generation on top, the 4070 is now hitting around 90 to 100 FPS. Latency is higher than what we had when we only had DLSS super resolution enabled, but it is still a touch lower than what we see from native performance. Lastly then, we're going to check out Starfield, with native performance around 40 to 50 FPS, though DLSS super resolution on its own doesn't give us a massive bump here, getting us around another 10 FPS or so. Enabling frame generation on top does get us a bigger boost to around 85 to 95 FPS depending on the specific area, though latency is also now slightly higher, but visually the fluidity is improved, so it's definitely an option if you are trying to drive higher FPS in certain situations where it wouldn't otherwise be possible. As these are two new models from Palette as well, we are going to take a closer look at both the RTX 4070 White alongside the RTX 4070 Ti Super Game Rock Omni Black, so you get a good feel for the design and some of the features baked into these cards. Starting off with the RTX 4070 White then, as the name suggests, this is a new all-white design, stretching from the shroud to the fan blades and even over to the backplate. It's an impressively compact card too, measuring 269 by 127 by 40 millimeters, so could be a good small form factor option, and it weighed in at just over 700 grams on my scales. Despite that, it still rocks two 95 millimeter fans, and those do stop spinning under low load. As for the RTX 4070 Ti Super Game Rock Omni Black, we have seen a few Game Rock models in the past, but as this is the Omni Black version, there's no RGB, and instead we get those much darker crystals for a more what I describe as a mysterious appearance. It also sports a metal backplate and three Gale Hunter fans, each measuring approximately 90 millimeters. In terms of dimensions, it measures 392 by 138 by 72 millimeters, weighing in at just over 2 kilograms on my scales, but it does also support dual BIOS. So that is going to do it for this sponsored showcase look at Palette's RTX 4070 White and RTX 4070 Ti Super Game Rock Omni Black. As we've seen today then, if you have something like a GTX 1080 or RTX 2080 or anything in between, then upgrading to one of these cards is going to net you massive performance gains. Often these modern cards are looking twice, if not three times as fast, depending on specific situations, like if you're trying to play with ray tracing enabled. These 40 series cards also get the benefits of not only DLSS super resolution, but also DLSS frame generation as we looked at today. So if you are interested in picking up one of these cards, I will leave links down in the description below so you can check them out if you're interested. That is going to do it for this video though guys, so if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up. As always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and please do subscribe if you haven't already, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload a new video. Please do come carry on the conversation with us over in our Discord server, which is linked down in the description, and while you're there, you'll also find a link to pick up a cool t-shirt like the ones on screen via our merch store. Lastly, if you're feeling particularly generous, you can consider backing us on Patreon, but that's it for this one guys. I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.